Ooh, I've been busy. I'm going to kind of show y'all what I've been doing in my front yard. Because you know what I'm saying? I bought the new big black truck for Live Black. We're going to talk about that in a second. But let me show you what I was doing in my front yard. This is what I've been doing for the past couple of days. I've been building me a canopy over my front yard. So that's my front yard canopy now covering up my cars in the front. I actually got a Jeep appointment tomorrow. I got two Jeep appointments tomorrow. Each one is $55. So I'll do two $55 rounds for $110 in that. And then tomorrow night, I got 100 and I think 55, either 160 or 155. I can't remember. I know I did 70 and 85 or it was 70 and 70. I can't remember, but I got this tomorrow. So I'm going to take the big truck out tomorrow. You know, it's always up under the canopy too. I keep everything around here up under canopies. So it stays nice. Now I'm going to go put my black cover back on my Escalade. You can see the shadow coming around the corner. I got to build a canopy on that side soon, but I just finished building this all weekend. Man, it took me about three days to construct this thing. I got lights up on it. I got my beams. I got my welds and everything like that. And I said, I got it to where, you know, I got it welded at the bottom, braced it. And as you bring it up, you know, it brackets at the top there. I got that top bracket, top bracket over there is bracketed to the house. These two in the front will be bracketed to the ground. I got uh, plates that I got a, plates like that. And it's got holes in it. So I'm going to drill down into the concrete, bracket all of this stuff to the concrete on each side. And that one, like I said, and that one's bracketed at the top to the house way back over there. So this thing will be, it'll be pretty good. Like I said, it's shade for my cars, man. Keeps my cars cool all day. But I got appointments tomorrow. Let's go out and get it. Okay, so now everything's all nice and shaded. So my car stays cool when I go pick people up. But we've been hearing about Liv Black talking about leaving the plant. Their Liv is getting rid of Liv Black. That's what the whole Liv is getting rid of Liv Black. They're getting rid of you know what I've been saying for the longest, even when they got rid of Lux, have I still been making money in that BMW with no Lux? Have I still been, y'all been watching me. Y'all see how I drive. Even without Lux, I was still making money. How did I make enough money to where I can get up and go buy an SUV? The only reason why I bought the SUV was so I can do bigger parties. I'm still doing the same thing. I go do cash rides, but people been tripping off this shit. They think I'm just an app driver. I do this y'all saw in my last video i took a lift basic ride lift basic in my black suv for about a mile 23 dollars 23 dollars you know why because i know how to drive ain't nobody paying 23 dollars a mile on any of these black platforms you think they're gonna give you 23 dollars a mile for a black platform drive no they're not how do i get 23 dollars a mile you get that surge you take that shit all the way to the bottom you do a real quick ride you gotta be smart to work these apps if I'm trying to get $20 a mile and I know black don't pay $20 a mile, what do I do? You grab a surge, you drop that shit down, $20 a mile. I don't give a fuck who I'm driving. This is about the money. It ain't about nothing else. This is about the money. So when I hear about Liv, oh, Liv is leaving, Liv is leaving. Cool, leave. The fuck they got to do with me? Y'all know I roll up on somebody. I get a $12 ride. I turn that motherfucker to $25. I don't care if you XL, if you Comfort. This is a black SUV. You want to do $25? I picked up somebody from the airport yesterday. $55. They didn't, I don't know how much the airport was charging. I had a black SUV. I got to take you up to Scottsdale. So I pick you up at the airport, take you to Scottsdale, $55 cash. I don't know what the apps was charging. This is how I drive. So when people say, oh, they're going to remove the tier. Those are pigeons. Those are employee minded. Me, I'm a contractor with a big ass truck, a city full of people. I picked up a couple yesterday. They were talking about, oh yeah, man, we got to go to this spot. You know, if there's any way you can get us, I said, you know what? I'm going to take you, but I'm going to use the Jeep for it. That's right. Tomorrow, I got two rides in the Jeep tomorrow because I got to take them somewhere. It's kind of off-road a little bit. But this is what I do. The Jeep ain't even on no tier. The Jeep ain't on nobody's platform. I took it off both platforms, but I'm using the Jeep tomorrow for two private rides. This is what I do. So don't sit up there telling me, oh, man, they removing Live Black. The people that think like that, I don't drive like them. I don't even think like them. I don't know who the fuck these people are. I'm a contractor. These motherfuckers is employees. I don't care what Lyft says. I don't care what Uber says. I can catch a comfort ride. Y'all even saw at the concert. When I was at the concert picking up that one guy, I did a $60 ride. They were giving me $28. $28. I did it for $60. They did, were giving me $28 on an Excel ride. $28 on an Excel. Lyft Excel. I canceled that motherfucker and did it for $60. This is how I drive. I don't care about no tear. I care about the money. How far you got to go? Cool. My name's Jeff. This is my truck. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. This is how much I charge. 
I don't care about, oh, when they remove Live Black, you ain't going to get no money. No, motherfucker, you ain't going to get no money. That's how you drive. Okay, I just did a cash ride from the airport all the way up here to Ganey Ranch. I charged them $40 cash. 40 bucks cash wasn't bad. But if I would have did it on HUM, this is how much they would have paid. So I always turn my HUM on because I use my, my commercial insurance with HUM. So I came up here, dropped them off, $31. I charged $40. Roughly about the same. Now, Uber, this is where I was the other night. This is where I was located when they said $15, and I told that lady $35, and she said no. See, Hum would have gave me $31 in the sedan. I'm in the SUV now. Hum would have gave me $31 in the sedan. I would have charged them $35 in this to take them all the way to the airport. Y'all saw, Excel was only paying me $15 to take that lady and her mom with them six bags from where I am right now all the way to the airport. Hum pays twice as much as what Excel paid for. I charge $40 because that's I can make up my own rate. This is what I'm telling people, man. Don't think that these apps are going to pay you what you're worth. You got to state your worth. I made $9 more than what Hum would have paid, but I made what? $25 more than what Uber XL would have paid me. Hum is still winning the game right now. And this is Hum Sedan, not Hum SUV or Hum XL. This is just Hum Sedan would have paid 31. I end up making 40. I'm telling y'all, I'm running at $80 an hour right now. 13 miles paid me $40. 13 miles, 40 bucks. 13 miles, well, let's say 14. 14 miles on Hum would have paid 31. Even on Hum Sedan, that's $60 an hour. Hum Sedan is $60 an hour. My own rate is $80 an hour. Uber would have paid me $30 an hour. Ain't that some shit? I know in my video I said 40, they gave me 55. I forgot we had to stop at a Wendy's. We stopped at Wendy's and they gave me $15 extra for that. It was originally a $40 ride and I was like, okay, 40 bucks, let's roll. Can you stop at Wendy's? I was like, bet. I just went through the drive through Took him to the hotel, $55, one ride. They was from the airport. They was offering me fifteen dollars the other night for that ride. Crazy shit, and I got fifty-five for it, cash. So the trick is to park somewhere nice and have your working gear on. So when people walk by, they go, "Oh, hey, are you a driver? Can you do me a favor and take me down?" I'm like, "Sure, I can. No problem." That's what the trick is. Park somewhere where you know people are gonna be walking past and driving past. When they ask if you're a driver. Hand them a card. Even walk up and say, hey, man, if you guys need a ride later, you need something, I'll be in the area. You know, I only charge, you know, $20, $25, take you down the street, and they see this big-ass car, they go, $20, $25, damn. Guess what? It's five miles down to Old Town right now. You're getting $5 a mile. These are quick little hops, and I got to go that way anyway, so you can get 25 bucks, throw four people in real quick, take them five miles. Guarantee you take somebody five miles on Uber, UberX, or whatever like that, you're going to get like six, seven dollars, maybe nine, maybe. Just say 25, take them down the street, done deal. Just did this really short black trip, live black, and the guy paid $19 for it, tipped me 482, so he paid close to about $25 total, and I got 16 out of the 25. But the good thing is, this guy, he runs his own bookkeeping service, and his name's Dave, and he was like, and I was telling him about, I was an accountant in Vegas, he says, you know what, I get contracts all the time for bookkeeping, he says, if you're still in the, in the market for, you know, you want some a couple of contracts. So I gave him my card. I said, yeah, my name's Jeff Watts. He says, I like that. That's so simple. Just Jeff Watts. I'm like, Jeff Watts, that's it. He says, you're going to hear from me, Jeff Watts. <laughs> so he was pretty cool. So I might be doing a couple of accounting contracts. I haven't done accounting in so long. Well, I do it for myself. I mean, it's cut and dry. It's pretty simple. So I'll probably be doing a couple of accounting contracts. This guy, we'll see how it goes. He's a pretty cool guy. He'd be fun to work with, man. He's all right. Frustrated Uber riders are waiting a while to find and connect with drivers. I live at DuPont, so it's usually two, three minutes. Now it's five to 15 minutes. And many scratching their heads. Yeah, and or if you're in a certain area, they'll just cancel on you. So it's very unfortunate. I'm sorry, little lady, but it's not that we cancel on you. We cancel on the fare that we're getting. Now, if we roll up and you agree to say, hey, you know what, Jeff? I just paid $21 for this ride. I know you're getting eight, nine dollars for it. How about I just give you 20 and we just call it good. See, you won't be getting canceled on. Riders got to realize we want to give you a ride. We have the car keys. We've got the cars. We do the maintenance on them. We're ready to do the rides. 
But if the fare's not right, we can't allow Uber and Lyft to price fix. We cannot allow them to fix a price that benefits them, but doesn't benefit us. The Sherman and our trust act, you can't do that. You gotta allow independent contractors to negotiate. So since you're not allowing us to negotiate, that means you're controlling the market on pricing, price fixing. Riders, you gotta speak up. If you need a ride to get from point A to point B, talk to the driver, be like, hey man, I paid $50 for this ride. How much of that are you actually getting? $23? Tell you what, how about I just give you, cancel this, I'll give you $40. You know me, I'll be like, shit, let's go. All right, cool. Complaints about much longer than normal wait times rolling across social media, and it's clear, a shift in how drivers determine who they want to pick up is happening. Now, here's the thing. When you talk to Uber drivers, a lot of them will say that they don't want to drive long distances to pick someone up like 10 minutes away because they're not getting paid for that time to drive to someone to pick them up and then take them on a ride. Michael Willie has been an Uber driver for years. If you're more than 10 minutes away from where I'm at, it's not worth it for me to go uh, that extra amount of time to pick you up. I prefer shorter rides uh, or shorter pickups at least. Something else to consider, safety concerns for rideshare drivers. I know some drivers last year, unfortunately, have been murdered, uh, carjacked. Um, I don't know if that's contributed to it. Um, depends on the time of day as well. Well, that's funny because I do private rides and I got somebody in my comments talking about private rides aren't safe. Only app is safe. I mean, it, if you do it off the app, it's not safe. My wife don't trust it if you do it off the app. You know, she feels safer on the app. Yet this dude is talking about exactly what goes on on the app. We got a lot of channels that talk about what goes on on the app for drivers, also for riders. What happened to riders and on the app? I'm a private driver. I like to select my people. I like to vet my own people. And like I told dude, I say, well, because your wife is paranoid, she's probably somebody I'd cancel right off the fucking bat. I don't deal with paranoid ass people. Cause if you scared, you scared for a reason. You up some shit, your energy is off. So I don't want you in my car with some off ass energy. I don't feel safe in your car. Well, fucking cancel. Quick as a motherfucker. I ain't got time for that shit. Ain't nobody got time for that. And he says the internal pay structure at Uber has also changed. Certain bonuses have gone away, and the amount that Uber itself takes for trips has gone up. That could be leading to fewer drivers right now. Driver pay overall has been down since the pandemic. I used to be able to do this full time, and that's no longer reality. Now, Uber tells us simply they're looking into this. They're looking into it. Wait a minute. We didn't already told y'all. Y'all stealing our fares and stealing our tips. What the fuck you mean? We're looking into it. Y'all know exactly what y'all doing. Y'all been sued for this shit. Y'all done settled for this shit. Don't play. Oh, we don't know what's going on. Why drivers ain't being paid a lot and why our fees keep going up and why we keep getting more money and billions of dollars on the backs of these fucking pigeons. We don't know why. We'll look into it. <laughs> We're also checking with Lyft riders to see if they're experiencing similar wait times, but haven't heard of any issues there. So right now, a lot of riders tell us they shop around for their trip or they take Metro. In DuPont Circle, Adam Tuss, News 4. Yeah, I had to put that clip in there just so y'all can kind of get an idea. But I told y'all a long time ago what was going to happen. Drivers are going to start waking up to the bullshit. People going to start canceling, declining and reclining. This is what we do. We ain't taking no shit. I said months ago when i first came out with that decline and recline shirt keep declining shit because at some point we're gonna start hitting their ass in the pockets and that's when they're gonna be like we ain't getting no rides if you can't get a ride you can't close the transaction so if you can't close the transaction you're not gonna get revenue shit's gonna start affecting you after a while and then if you do close the transaction and somebody show up cancel the fucking ride and they get cash drivers are still being taken care of transactions ain't being closed but drivers are making money how's this shit happening Decline and recline, cancel and convert. Y'all know exactly how this shit's happening. Keep hitting their ass in the pockets. This is how we protest. I was just about to say, I'm about to sit here and scout some Excel rides for a while and then this shit comes up. Yeah, that's probably a $20 ride right there all day, 20 bucks. So I'm not doing that one. I mean, they're only, you know, not too far away. I would do it for 20. I wouldn't do it for no $10 though. That's one thing I wouldn't do. So I just put it on Excel on Lyft because I'm down in Tempe and there's no, nobody's going to order a black rod in Tempe. So I'm going to see what XL and Comfort has to offer. Maybe roll up, tell somebody, you know what, 20 bucks, let's do it. If they say, yep, then it's all good. If they say, you know what, we're just going to go then. But I guarantee these people over here, yeah, they're going to they're gonna want to do it. 
Because, I mean, that right there was, pro they probably sold that ride for, I will say, $22, $23. And they were giving me $10.61. Because it's surging right now, so they're charging surge pricing, but they're not giving the driver any surge. So that's how you know that when it's surging out and they're charging people for these rides, they're charging more than double. So you got to kind of keep that in consideration when you want to price your rides for somebody. I had it on black earlier, but I was like, ah, like I said, and that's still that same $16 ride from earlier. I went home for a while. I had to, I just put these new headlights in and these are some, uh, some HID white lights. Cause I had the yellow ones in at first. They were kind of like that amberish yellow color. I didn't like those. So I pulled those out, put some HID like whitish lights in. Looks a whole lot better. It's lighting the whole street up. I mean, the fog lights are bright. The, the truck lights are, man, it's crazy. But it's like, yeah, I'll probably be rolling out here in a second. Got to see what they're going to start doing as far as business goes. So far, nothing. A whole line over there at Casa, but right now ain't nobody really doing much. Bunch of kids walking around and shit. So I'm probably going to turn this thing off and see if I can go give me some money somewhere. I was sitting here chilling and right around the corner, somebody ordered a black SUV, six miles, $30. I think I'm going to take it. I ain't going to convert that. I'm cool with that. They ordered a black SUV. Let's go get it. Shit, I'm like, you know what? And they're going up to Scottsdale. This is $30. Usually I do them runs all day for $15. Double the money. Let's go. Okay, that was that trip right there. 20 minutes, 6 miles, $31. But guess what? They paid $51. $51 to go 6 miles. It was 5 of them. Yeah, we're not doing that. I still got it on XL. But check this shit out. So... I picked him up. He's like, hey, man, you got a card? He asked. He says, you got a card? My driver had an accident. We need a driver, man. I said, all right, bet, man. So I gave him my card. He says, oh, shit, you're doing it legit. He says, dude, I've owned so many BMWs, Aston Martins. He was naming off all these cars. Man, I was like, damn. He's like, bro, we're going to hook this truck up for you, man. We're going to put... Nope, not doing anything. He says, we're going to put TVs in the headrest. We're going we gonna to put a skylight. We're going to put a skyline all inside of the head, the uh, liner. <laughs> we was cracking up laughing. He was like, bro, you have no idea who you're picking up right now. So these guys right here, man, we, we're about to do some serious work. We're about to do some serious work on this truck if these guys is legit and they say who they are. I think it's funny because, I mean, some of the cars, he was talking about DB9s. Nobody know what a DB9 is. I got pictures of me working on DB7s. Those are Aston Martins. I used to do all the work on the DB7s from the LA car shows. All of them sitting down in Queen Creek. I would work on Aston Martins. Dudes that y'all had a DB9. I'm like, damn, so you know what Aston Martin is. But yeah, that was that trip right there. They paid, they straight paid $51 for that, man. $51. So of course, Lyft going ragged ass going to take out 16 of it. But guess what? That's now my private client. I got him now. So we about to do some damage now. Six miles, like I said, I'm trying to figure out this market. Black, they're 51 for six miles. That's damn near what? That's almost $10 a mile right there. About $8 a mile they were charging, $8 a mile. And I got $5 a mile pretty much. Then as I'm sitting here chilling, my man Billy hit me up. Hey, Jeff, I want to purchase an Uber ride home for my friend Saturday night from the AZ Financial Theater. Will you be working at area Saturday at Tracy Lawrence concert? Oh, we could do that, brother. Just drop people off while you were calling because he was calling me when I was just dropping off this Uber Black. He was calling. I said, just let me know what part of town I'll be dropping them off and I'll give you a sweet rate for black car service. They're going to love this truck pulling up. Hey, I'm dropping off black car service, creating new clients with these guys. Why well, got a client hit me up to pick up his people Saturday? I'm telling you, man, if y'all want to do this shit for real, we got to do it for real. You got to let your people know. Don't be like I said, I post on Facebook. I post on Instagram. I let people know I drive. If you guys want to do this, I drive. And that's that's not even I just set up one over here, too. Here's another one right here. I set up earlier and it's like, hey, man, he's talking about, you know, can he get a ride here? 530 flight to Atlanta. One suitcase, you know, 25 miles to Terminal 4. This and that. I need a ride from Gilbert to Val Vista to Sky Harbor on June the 4th. Cool. This is what we're talking about right here. Bam. I said, we can use the BMW to save money. Okay, we can use the small car. Cool. 530. All right, 60 bucks. That's about $2 a mile. I'll come get you. BMW, you know, 25 miles, 60 bucks. I'll do it. I'll do it. And I said, you know what? I actually live by there, so I'm really doing 50 miles, but I'll, I'll drive to you. I'm going to be out that way anyway that night. So I'm going to work, be out that way. Try to pick him up, 
bring him back. So therefore, if I can get a ride out to Gilbert or something like that, that's going to pay for my trip to him. Then he'll be the $60 ride back. So it's like, cool, I can do it on Square. Thank you, Jamil, for hooking me up with Square because he said, hey, can you get it on an invoice? Well, I can get you on Square. Don't worry about it. Bet. This is what we do, man. We always setting up shit right now. So that's sort of the end of my ride share related video. Now, you know, after this is just a video of me showing what I do when I'm not doing ride share. When people think, you know, that we just kind of tooling around doing it. I'm actually, I'm always building on my property. I'm always, you know, setting up appointments. I'm always working on shirts. I work on gear all the time. I got about four or five things running every single day. And that's not even counting my own personal stuff that I want to get done, like with the dogs and talking on the phone with people and stuff like that. So I'm always busy. But at least I'm going to show you guys this is kind of what I do. You know, when you don't see me, you don't hear from me for a few days, I am busy. So if I'm not returning your phone calls, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I'm probably at a, at a metal supply shop buying something so I can weld some shit. <laughs> I'm down at the steel supply house right now. I got to pick up all of this steel. I'm looking for where these guys at. They got to bring a forklift of steel all the way out here. And somehow I got to fit into the back of this Escalade. Like I said, I'll never roll with the third row. So it's going to have to go out the back. I mean, the longest one I got is 12 feet, and I've, I've hauled wood that was 12 foot before, but this is all steel. I got a lot of 8 footers, and I got a couple of 10 footers, but the 12 footers are what's going to kill me. So let's see if we can do this. Yeah, so that's the warehouse the steel's got to come out of right there. Like I said, I'm, today I'm rolling the Escalade. Everybody usually comes up here with like 18 wheelers and huge like metal supply trucks. Like they got those big trucks over there. They said if they if I kept them at 20 feet, they'd have to use one of those big trucks to bring it to my house and I would need a forklift to get it up. I'm like, yeah, I don't have a forklift. It's like, well, for another hundred dollars, we can, I'm like, no, Here, here's the big truck. Like I said, this truck right here, I bought this truck back in 2011. This thing's been doing a lot of work for me, a lot of work. Like I said, I don't think I could ever get rid of it because nobody would treat it like I treat it. This thing, this is a beast truck right there. That thing's done me very, made me a lot of money, but got me out of a lot of jams too. Then got me all the way to Virginia and back, Wisconsin, towing trailers, Vegas, and Missouri, man. That, that that truck does a lot of work. I can never get rid of that. Everybody like, man, you should just sell that. Shit, nope. That's, that's my 05 right there. That thing keeps, it, it keeps life going a lot easier. So let's see where they are with all my shit. Now, this is not the forklift I'm looking for. That one's empty. I'm looking for something with some stuff on it. All right, they just wheeled it out here. This is all my steel right here. Like I said, the long one, I got it up in there that far which is pretty cool. The two I got on the side like that, I could probably move that eight foot up a little bit. Like these small ones, I'll probably move those up a little bit to hang on these. But I just wanna make sure none of this shit falls out. So I'm about to wrap this up. Hold on for a second. Yeah, so this, like this middle one right here, I can lift this up and put this up here. Hold on for a second. Scoot back some. There we go. So that's where I want that one to be up there at the top like that. So it's like actually in the back. So it won't slide out. It'll hit that little hump right there. It won't slide out. This is all in the front, laying on top of my little piece right there. Looks like my battery's about to die. That's all good. So that's up there. Got these two in. Got me some rope so I can pull this back door down and I'm headed home. All right, that's what it looked like back there. Everything's all laid out flat. I got the door tied down on two sides. It ain't going nowhere. Got my long ones up here. I got my little, my little towel because I hold on to this like this because you don't want to get cut by these sharp edges. Put your little towel in the front. I can hold on like this. Otherwise, if I was to stop real real quick or something, you see these sharp edges? Those edges will get you. Cover up them sharp edges like that. Only got like two, three blocks to go. I live in this neighborhood. Let's get ready to get this stuff home. All right, made it home. I had to back her in real quick. So like I said, right next to, I moved the Jeep over earlier today because I knew I was gonna have to do this. So everything was perfectly fine. Nothing slid out, but that's how the back of it was looking when I was coming home. People were standing off my back real tight. I was like, yeah, don't you come on me. Look at these little critters right here. What's up, dogs? Look at that. That's the killer right there. No, he's not. That's the killer right there. Yeah, so there we go. I'm about to unload all of this. Like I said, I got the beamers covered up. I got to move the Audi out the way. I'm going to move all those over to the yard because I'm going to do my construction up under here to get all my angles right, weld everything right. Then I got to start placement. Move the Jeep out the way, move everything out the way, start my placement, seeing how I'm going to set it all up. See where my holes are going to go because I'm actually going to put them into the ground, probably about a foot, a foot down into the ground. And I'm going to pour concrete around it so I can kind of get a little sturdy. But this is going to be a fun project. Okay, for now, this is where I'm going to set it. 
I got to get rid of this oil. I might just take this oil down the street real quick because all that's full. I got to get rid of that oil because I did an oil change in my car the other day. But yeah, this is time to go. And speaking of the devil, look who just walked up. Look, <laughs> what's good? It's my son, Jers. And there's Miss Hannah right there. What's good? Okay, I did a little bit of welding last night, but I got to start getting this frame up. So here we go with today's welding project. Let's see, I got everything laid out. These are just the tack welds right there. Like I said, I'm just I'm just running a bead right now, a real strong bead on it. I can doctor it up later if I want to, but like I said, as long as I get it in between that groove, let it sit down in that groove, it should be pretty good. And I'm definitely gonna have to do something with this side. I like the way it looks, but I'm gonna have to get that a little more structured. I like it, but I need it to be a little more structured. So, and what I'm gonna do is with these holes right here. They're actually gonna drill into the back of like these cross members here. There's also two holes on this side, so I'm gonna do welds on the bottom, drill my self-tap screws in here. That'll hold that in place. And once I slide my other beam in like this, I'm gonna weld the beams to the beam. So everything's gonna be touching each other. And that's how I wanna have it. And that's the other one sitting way down there. It's gonna be 20 by 20, because like I said, those that's the welding I did last night. Whoops, let me get out of the shade. That's the welding I did last night. I put a couple of brackets on it just to hold it in place a little bit. Where my brackets at? Um, the sun is killing me. All right, there it is. Yeah, those brackets on the side there. And those are those self-tapping screws and the brackets that hold it in place. Like I said, my welds, all of this stuff is strong. I already tested that. I had it. I was super bending it last night just to make sure, but I got to get all this stuff. And the Jeep is running because I got to use that winch to stand this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this winch here. This winch right here, I grab this and I'm gonna wrap this around the, the top member and I'm gonna stand it straight up, not straight straight up, but enough to where it's enough tension. And once I get it stood up, I can start adding my others on there. But that's my plan, I'll show you what I mean as I go. Okay, this is the tricky part I was talking about. So I got my winch hooked up and it's going up and it's around the top of that. I got the two legs welded already. So I got the winch coming up and I'm gonna stand this not straight up, but close to straight up. And my winch can kind of go like real slow. It's like, it'll go kind of slow. I'll kind of, you know, record it for you to show you what I'm talking about. Hold up for a second. All right. Okay, now that I got that up in the air, stabilized, because what I did is once I got it welded, I put my bolts in the back of it. You see those little bolts there? So those bolts are now all in the back of it on each side, so those welds can't snap or nothing like that. I'm going to go back over and clean one of those welds up. I just don't like the way that one looks. I don't know what it is about it, but I got my next rack right here. So I'm going to drop this rack, uh, weld it down on that end, get it bolted in and everything. Then I got to hoist it. To get it up there once i got the l shape everything is fine once i got the l shape i won't need that anymore i won't need the winch anymore i can move the uh, jeep out the way and then i gotta move that big truck out the way black magic move black magic out the way get my other side set up and once all the sides are set up then i can start working on my uh, l brackets to stabilize everything my little quarters down like this i'm gonna have all my little l brackets going like that 
90 degree back because they just like braces or whatever. And I have them one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six of them. And that way this thing will be bracketed up there. Won't come down. Oh, that might be the last time I record, man. I can't keep messing with this phone. I got to get this stuff done. Okay, so I got everything bracketed up there. So I got that up there. I got that standing down there. Everything's pretty even. I'm about to put one of my those little corner brackets, those little 90 degree brackets like that. I'm going to put one up at the top for right now. So I'm going to do one at the top and maybe one right here. But definitely one at the top because I don't want this thing to sway at all. And then I'm going to start working on either that side or that side down there. I'm not sure yet, but I know I got to move that big ass truck. But like I said, the Jeep and this thing is, is standing on its own because right now I could just do like this. Like it's basically standing on its own right now. But I got that just as a safety, just in case it like slips or something. It ain't going to slip because like I said, it's bracketed. This whole side is like pretty much about 75 percent done. All right. So I got everything moved around. I got my whole frame up. I got one corner done and that's the whole contraption there you're gonna see what this looks like when it's all done i got the big truck sitting over here i had to move it somewhere but yeah you're gonna see because i'm gonna have these same lights you see how these lights are right here i'm gonna have these same lights wrapped around that plus with a big canopy like this canopy right here and so it'll protect all this shit from the sun hopefully i gotta do something with the escalator i'm gonna build the escalators around the corner i thought i'm gonna have more space in up here i'm not gonna have that much space so i'm gonna have to do the escalators around the corner Okay, so the whole structure is done. There's my whole structure right there. So everything's done. And now I'm working on the paint. See, I want to paint it that color, which is almost the same color as the house. It's close enough, but the color is called satin brick. So it's satin brick. And I'm gonna paint it that color so that way it's not that that just that silver. And I gotta get my lights and everything up. I'm ordering my canopies and all that, so here we go. All right, that's enough work for the day. I got everything up. Looks pretty cool. I got all my corner brackets, everything's painted. That's the color it's gonna be right there. That's what I was telling you about that color. So this is the whole frame. I got two, no, four more brackets to put on, and then I put the roof on. The roof is going, like I said, the roof is gonna be a canopy like that. But there's the lights on this canopy. So I already got these lights installed on this side up here. So those are those lights right there installed down this side. So they're going to light up at night. So it's going to look like how these are lit up like that. And they stay on pretty much 24 hours. But they're LED, so don't take no powder. One watt. So I got the whole frame up there. Like I said, it's all painted. I'm going to have the orange cars under here. I got to figure out what to do with that Escalade. All right, it's basically done right there. There it is. All my lights are up. I got them lit up both sides. That side over there. Wait a minute. Hit that side right there. Let's lock the screen. So there are my lights. They're going down both sides. My canopies will be in probably in the middle of next week. Today's going to be windy anyway, so I don't want to put them up when it's windy. It's too hard to get it adjusted. But once it's up there and it's locked in, oh, shit, it ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. Let's see something real quick, because this is how, you know, you drive in like this. It's going to be lights hanging on both sides. The big canopy like was hanging over the other cars over there. It's going to be nice and lit up at night. Look like a dealership over here. I got to scoot those cars farther apart. The Jeep's going to go closer to the house or I might switch sides. Put the Jeep where the Beamer is and move the Beamer over. But it's going to look like that. The Escalade. I don't know. I got to do something. I had something built over here a while back, but what I might do is is get these cars in here a different way since i don't use the escalate that much i might figure out how to get it up under here too all right 
all done. It's nice and shaded in the front. Well, that's because partially the sun's already on the back of the house. But there it is, nice and shaded. You can see the lights kind of lit up right up under there too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some ratchets for the very end so I can make this thing a little tighter. Like when it's blowing, the wind's kind of moving it a little bit. That's fine for right now. But I'm gonna move my car back to the driveway and put the Expedition right there. So I'm gonna move everything around when I got some time. But for right now, it looks pretty good. It looks decent. Like I said, it looks, you know, it looks uniform like across the whole front yard. <laughs> I gotta finish doing my driveway, building my driveway back all the way to over here, but looks pretty cool, looks decent. 